Welcome to the DevExpress Learn Now series, a set of quick tutorials to help you get started using our products. I'm Mihul Hiri, the Web Product Manager. In this video, you'll see how easy it is to display images and navigate through them using the new image slider control for ASP.NET Web Forms. The image slider can be bound in three different ways. First, let's start with the new ASP.NET application. Under the DX Navigation and Layout category, you'll find the ASPX Image Slider. Simply drag and drop this control on, and the easiest way to data bind it to a set of images that you already have in your folder is to set the Image Source Folder property. I'll set this property to my local folder called Images Landscapes, and that's it. Now let's take a look at it in action. Now, just by dropping the control and data binding it, I have an image slider control that gives me the capability to navigate through the images. The main element is the image area. It displays navigation buttons that allow you to navigate through the images. The image slider also allows the images to change with a predefined effect. For example, the slide animation or the fade animation. By default, the slide effect is used but we can also change it using a swipe gesture. And the image slider control is very mobile friendly. It supports touch on all iOS and Android devices as well as IE10 on Windows 8. Below the image area is the navigation bar. You can place this bar at any side. For example, the left, the top, the right, or the bottom. And the navigation bar allows you to quickly navigate through the images. The bar can also work in two modes. In the thumbnail mode, the navigation bar displays navigation button that allows you to scroll through image thumbnails. The second mode, dots, allows you to display dots instead of thumbnails. This mode is probably more appropriate for a small amount of images. Now, let's see how the ASPX image slider control can be populated manually. First, I'll remove the image sources folder. And to manually create them, I'll click on the smart tag and select items. Now I can manually create each image slider item. Just specify the image URL, the name, and the text properties. Now let's take a look at this in action. Now let's see how we can customize a few more of the settings in the image slider. I'll set the settings image area animation type from auto to fade. The image size mode property allows you to specify how an image fits into an image area. Set it to fill and crop to fill the area and crop the prominent parts of the image. Then set the navigation bar visibility property to none to hide the navigation button within the image area. Now, in the settings navigation bar, we can specify the property of dots or using the image thumbnails. Now, let's take a look at this in action. You can see that the navigation bar contains the dots, which allow you to change the active image. and the image changes with the fade effect. And at the bottom of the image area, we can see the item text that we've entered. And the navigation buttons are invisible. Now, let's see how we can data bind the image slider to a data source. First, I'll remove this items that I've entered. And next, I'm going to use this file, people.xml, to data bind it to. It's a simple file that lists the name, the text, and the image URL. I'll click on the Smart Tag and select the Choose Data Source option. I'll select New Data Source. And because I have an XML file, I'll choose the XML Data Source option. And I'll also set an XPath expression to point to the root element of items. Now, I want to make sure that I'm bound to the right fields. So in the Properties Editor, I will make sure the Image URL field is bound to the image URL field 
and the name field is bound to the name field, and the text field is bound to the text field. Now, I also want to make a couple of adjustments to the settings image area. I'll set the show item text to false, and I'll select the slide animation direction to vertical instead of horizontal. So it will be sliding up and down versus left or right. And in the settings navigation bar, I want to set the position of the navigation bar on the left hand side instead of the bottom. Now let's take a look at this in action. Now we can see the thumbnail bar is placed on the left hand side and the direction of the slide is up and down versus left or right. Thanks for watching and let's see what develops.